Okay guys, it's the last lecture capture for tonight. Redundancy or duplicate genes. In this case, again, our parental is going to be homozygous times homozygous, and again, the F1. This would look just like a one gene cross, complete dominance. Again, we need to look down to the F2. The ratio in the F2 is what's going to give you the clue. In this case, it's a 15 to 1 ratio. Have we ever seen that for anything else? No. So let's take a look. Here's our Punnett square. Again, genotypes don't change. You can take a look at that just like you would see anything else. And in this case, anytime any gene is dominant, if either allele, ha if either gene has at least one allele dominant, it looks red. The only time you see the white phenotype or the second phenotype is when you have the double recessive. So it's a duplicate gene. Either A or B, right, A or B allows it to look red, right? Here's a nice case here. Here's a better case, right? A B in this case, doesn't matter what's at A. If there's one big B, you get red. There's one big A, you get red. So again, a modification of the 9 to 3 to 3 to 1, where everybody is the one phenotype, the other guy is the recessive. That's redundancy. That's all it is. Not so how do we do this? What are we looking for? Look for patterns in the F2 phenotypic ratios. If only one gene's involved, like complete dominance, incomplete dominance, the monohybrid F2 phenotypic ratios, it's either 3 to 1, what is that? Complete dominance. 1 to 2 to 1, phenotypic ratio, what is that? Incomplete or co. Or 2 to 1, recessive lethal allele, right? Can't be anything else. That's all we've ever seen. If two genes are involved in the trait, right, the dihybrid phenotypic ratios are 9 to 3 to 3 to 1, or some permutation of that, right? These guys are all of the extensions. In this case, what are these possibilities? A regular dihybrid, or the two genes, one phenotype, depending on what the phenotypes are. This is just one, color or shape. This has to be two, color and shape. That's how you can call those. We know this is recessive epistasis. This is duplicate recessive epistasis or complementary gene action. This is dominant epistasis and that is redundancy. We always know the one of 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 is always homozygous recessive, right? So we know that that one is always that. You must, must, must know what the 9, the 3, and the 3 to 1 stand for in the genotypes. It's just the permutations or the changes in the phenotype that tell you which kind of action is going on. Okay? Again, two genes, one phenotype. Additive gene action. Four phenotypes, not three in the F2. And it's 9 to 3 to 3 to 1. How do you know this? Well, it's only one trait. So it can't be a dihybrid. Dihybrid means two traits. Complementary gene action, right? Duplicate recessive epistasis, right? All you need is one good copy of each gene, right? Or one is needed for, to be expressed in the final phenotype, okay? And for regu for epistasis, right, either recessive epistasis or dominant epistasis, one gene masks the effects of another gene, either in the recessive state, right, little e, little e, or dominant, a big B, blank, something like that, right? And then duplicate genes, only the double mutant has a mutant phenotype, only the double recessive homozygous. Here's a nice little chart that came from a different book, right, that gives you sort of a, 
a visual colored inspection of everything that we've already said here. This is a really good thing to look at. Make sure you understand these. If you just memorize the ratios, you're going to get some of the answers. But sometimes you're going to have to get to, yes, it's complementary gene action, right? Or it's duplicate recessive epistasis. And then I'm going to ask you what the three means, or what are the genotypes in the three, or what are the phenotypes and why. So you have to understand it as well. The ratios will get you some points. Understanding it and being able to work the problems will get you more points. This is from our book, I think, right? And the only one that we didn't talk about, we didn't do this one, and we didn't do this one. The rest of these we did. So you can ignore those two, right? And so that's it. That's the end of this lecture capture. Please watch and enjoy over and over. Thanks for watching. Bye. Take off, eh? And 